what we're going to talk about today is some tips and tricks with FeatureWorks. And uh, again, my name is Chris Snyder. I want to welcome you guys. Let me ask you a question before we get started here. If you wanted to find the best way to get from a drawing to a fully featured model, what would be the best way to do that? And maybe you didn't have a drawing, maybe it was an idea or something that you had to come up with um, to perform your role. Like, so we're going to create a CAD model. Well, everyone knows all you have to do is hit the easy button, right? Go from CAD, uh, go from uh, drawing to CAD model is just as easy as that. Well, sometimes FeatureWorks is looked at that way. If you've used this before or seen it before uh, in passing, um, people see it and we it's, it's basically to go from an imported part, something that we're bringing in from another CAD system, and we want to create a fully featured SOLIDWORKS model. Uh, FeatureWorks is part of SOLIDWORKS standard, so everybody has access to that ever since uh, SOLIDWORKS 2016, that is. Um, but as you can see on the screen, this model that we've got shown here just uh, was imported, but it doesn't have a feature tree, right? So you get one feature called imported. What we'd like to get to is what we're showing on the right is something that we can manage and manipulate uh, some features on the screen. So FeatureWorks, uh, closest thing that we have to the easy button, let's see what it can do here. So we're going to give this a role and tell it to uh, recognize features and use um, the recognition mode of automatic and just select all the features and tell it, hey, go see what you can do with this model. So uh, while it's working here a little bit, you can see that there is an interactive and an automatic mode as well as standard and sheet metal features types. But what I really want is this to be an easy button. So hopefully it comes back. And in this model, it actually works pretty well. It recognizes everything in the model. And then this is the fun part where you get to watch SOLIDWORKS um, going with uh, how we would build this model, right? So um, it's kind of cool to watch that and say, like, if SOLIDWORKS was going to build this model, how would it do it? And when it comes back, it has a fully featured uh, feature tree that we can roll back and forward and, and um, you know, make changes to these, to, these, um, to these features. So if every model worked that way, it would be fantastic. But there's reality that we got to deal with. First of all, there's no such a thing as an easy button. And so therefore SOLIDWORKS, I mean, FeatureWorks doesn't always give you what you want. So Sometimes it gives you too many features, like it could have grouped some things together. Um, sometimes it doesn't give you enough features, and sometimes they're not the right kind of features, and sometimes there are no features. Just as an example, on the model that we just ran, uh, one of the features uh, for this, uh, as pointed out there, instead of creating a rib with a full round fillet on it, it kind of punted and said, you know what, I'm just going to make this a surface and then thicken it into a solid. So um, that may not be what we want. So what we're really going to have to do is give some feature work some help. Okay. So we're going to show another example here, and we're going to start out with some easy stuff. So we'll look for things like text extrudes and holes. So for holes, we're looking for counter bores, counter sinks, threads, drill bit services, that kind of thing. Next, uh, we're going to let feature works take a crack at finding all the fillets and chamfers in the model. And then we're going to uh, allow those features to be built with errors. And the reason for that is if we can get something to, to show up on the screen, we might be able to fix it pretty easily uh, after the FeatureWorks process is finished. So uh, we're going to allow that to happen. Uh, next is this volume features. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll show you how that works. But this is kind of uh, when no other feature type will work, SOLIDWORKS just says, I can't uh, get there. Um, what it'll do is create a surface and then thicken that surface into uh, a solid. So that's kind of a, a way to keep rolling with this without it actually building a, um, a feature that you can manipulate with, with dimensions. And then finally, we're going to look for patterns. So these are the things that we're going to uh, help FeatureWorks do. Uh, so here's our next example. And like I mentioned, we want to turn on this option. Uh, so it does have a few options here. Uh, to allow failed feature creation. So 
if somewhere along the way it figures out, hey, there should be a feature here, it may kind of get halfway there and then we can uh, help it along for the, for the last half. So as we start up FeatureWorks on this model, we're not going to go the automatic recognition mount, uh, automatic recognition mode route, if I can speak. Um, we're going to start out by, you know, doing some things interactively. And what that means is just, hey, I'm going to um, take this off the list. I'm going to go ahead and recognize uh, extruded text. This is a, a casting or something. Some holes here, you can see the different feature types that you can specifically tell it to look for instead of just um, letting it decide whatever it should do with, with the geometry on the screen. So uh, it found a couple of holes there. We told it to, if you find some similar holes, go ahead and recognize those as well. Got more holes and boom, we run into uh, something here where you might see this a lot if you've used, uh, tried to use FeatureWorks. Uh, we didn't pick the drill bit surface at the bottom of that hole. So for this particular case, if we would just simply include that face, SOLIDWORKS uh, does a great job of recognizing all the holes uh, that are that same size. So next, uh, we looks like we've got a lot, a lot of fillets and chamfers in here. So let's let FeatureWorks take a crack at that. And um, we'll come into this intermediate stage and see that there's this thing called an unrecognized body. When you select on that, it kind of lets you know that, hey, this is how much of this solid that's still yet to be recognized. So the neat thing here is that I can flip back to the initial uh, page and say, well, let me uh, help you move along here a little bit further. Maybe there's a, a chamfer it missed here for some reason. Use the interactive mode to recognize that one. And then say, well, let's just look at extrudes this time. So let's use the automatic recognition mode again. And uh, you can see um, by selecting the unrecognized body again that this is still what's left to be recognized. So it did find a number of extrudes that it could uh, create. So you'll see those disappear from the model interactively as you go. Next, this looks like a circular part. Maybe let's try uh, some revolves. So um, see if it has any luck finding uh, those. And indeed, uh, kind of filled in the bottom there with um, some features that we'll take a look at here in a minute. Finally, that, that volume on the top is just really struggling with that. So we're going to call that a volume feature, kind of punt on that one and just uh, extract a surface, thicken it into a solid, and, and um, maybe we'll deal with that here in a little bit. What that does is it gives us a nice, clean, revolved um, solid to work with. So one more time, we're going to flip back to that initial part of the property manager, and we're going to tell it to look for revolves one more time, and um, it'll come back and find that now we have a fully featured model. There's no more unrecognized bodies. Last thing we want to do is say, hey, if you find any patterns, we have uh, uh, tell it to go look for some circular patterns. It found a couple of those, so that'll be nice. Make our feature tree a little bit more compact. And then, like I said, this is kind of the fun part where you get to watch your model get built on the screen. So um, take a look at the feature tree, and we end up with a fully featured model as if we had built this ourselves. We went from that imported feature now to a number of features that have been built by FeatureWorks. So just to kind of recap this section, uh, most of the time, the automated tools are not going to work entirely. So we, we do have some models that that work on, and um, but what you may find is that it, it didn't do exactly what you wanted it to, so we're going to give it some help, right? So we used both the interactive and automatic modes and flipped back and forth um, between that intermediate stage and the beginning stage uh, to, you might recognize uh, revolves more than once, for instance. We did that a couple of times, and we keep trying to work down until there isn't any unrecognized body left. So we started with some easy stuff. Um, holes, for instance, is, is a great place to start. Just remember that FeatureWorks works best on prismatic parts. So in other words, if you can make the part with a 2.5 axis uh, mill, then we got a pretty good shot at FeatureWorks is going to be able to help us. If you have complex surfaces, uh, some solid with a bunch of complex surfaces on it, uh, you're not going to have a great deal of success uh, creating a fully featured um, feature tree using FeatureWorks. I'll just tell you right up front. Next, we looked at some fillets and chamfers. 
we allowed uh, FeatureWorks to kind of take a crack at this. And we made sure that the option to allow features with errors it was turned on because if it's off, um, when it finds something with an error, it just stops. And then you're kind of left with that unrecognized body, which is not what we're after. Finally, um, we're going to see what the volume feature looks like when we take a look at our model again. This is something that, you know, no other feature type will work. So we'll go ahead and call it a volume. And then we can decide whether or not we want to manually recreate these features as actual features instead of just a thickened surface. And then finally, we looked at patterns. So that just makes our um, feature tree a little bit more compact. So as we move forward, uh, we've given FeatureWorks some help. Now we're going to give it some more help. So when we look at our feature tree, we might find some errors, in particular in our model, some fillets and some sketch planes. They're going to have some errors, and we'll fix those. And then we'll take a look at what it takes to recreate some geometry um, that was generated by this volume feature. So picking up where we left off, uh, we scroll through the feature tree here and see that we've got some fillets here uh, that are generating some errors. So we located those. We're going to um, then just edit them and see what we can find from it. And when I edit this feature, it looks like it's trying to put a fillet on an edge um, that looks an awful lot like an edge right next to it. So in this case, uh, you might decide as the designer to say, well, let's edit whatever feature is building that fillet and add these other edges to it instead of trying to fix uh, the fillet command that these edges currently belong to. So kind of make some of those decisions along the way here to repair this model. <clears throat> so that's going to work real nice for those edges, but now we've got other edges that we've got to fix. So fillet 2, that feature, if we uh, take a look at it, is the fillet that runs around the base of that um, protrusion. And if we just simply turn on tangent propagation here, we don't have to do anything else. And that'll collect those additional edges that were generated and uh, put that fillet back in for us. So we're cooking uh, pretty good at this point. And now we can just either suppress or delete these four variable fillets that FeatureWorks placed because they're, they're no longer needed or valuable to us. So no more errors, but now let's take a look at where that um, that volume feature was created. So you can see there's a surface, and then we used the thicken command uh, to kind of make that into a solid. So what if we delete that thicken command? We should expect perhaps that we're going to affect some other things downstream, like we've got a couple of fillet features and some sketches there that will get deleted or be affected by this. In our case, we're going to do the, the simple way here. We have a short uh, webinar. We're just going to simply convert some edges and do an extrude here uh, to create that feature versus having it just be kind of a dumb feature. So you could go into greater detail there, recreate that, that uh, sketch if you wanted to, to put all the dimensions in there. Like I said, we're just, for the uh, lack of time, we're going to just uh, go this route. So let's roll down to the end and see how many errors we might have created here by changing something upstream. And uh, we've got our first one here on this uh, sketch. You can't find a uh, sketch plane. Those are generally not too hard to fix. In this case, uh, is, is no different. So we'll fix that feature. Still got a couple of others to take a look at. We'll find our, our next error is very similar uh, to this. So this is um, a cut extrude that uh, can no longer find the sketch face, so we'll supply that um, and correct that. One more error to deal with, and that has to do with some filleting. So when we go to look at these fillets or any other feature, there might be missing faces or edges or things that we may not know where they are. So one step that we could do right here is to simply get rid of the missing edges now and see what we're left with, right? So uh, we're making some progress. We've given FeatureWorks uh, some additional help to help build this solid that we're interested in, in basically reverse engineering, and it's looking pretty good at this point. So we gave it some help, and then we gave it some more help. We came in and said, all right, we've uh, corrected some fillets. We were missing some edges. Some edges were grouped in the wrong place. That caused some downstream problems, caused some sketch planes to go missing, so we repaired those. We looked at the volume feature. Remember, this is something that um, FeatureWorks says, I don't, I can't get there from where you're, where you're at. You're just going to have to create a surface and thicken that into some volume. So 
So recreating that geometry could take significant time just to be aware of that. Uh, our model here uh, for time purposes uh, goes pretty quickly, but just know that it might be quicker to redraw the geometry versus using feature works. Sometimes we get stuck in our head like this, uh, this feature works thing is gonna save us all kinds of time. Well, it can, but it, um, just to be honest with you, it doesn't work on every model. It, it won't work on every model. So you're gonna have to give it some help or you might just have to say, we'll have to redo this. If you need a full feature tree, right? Because that's our uh, beginning premise is that we wanted a full feature tree and not just a dumb solid. So where can we go from here with our little example model? How do I know that the geometry that I have at this point is the same as the imported model? Um, I don't wanna have to go through and check each face or, or rotate the model around or compare it to some drawing. So I'm gonna use compare geometry. So this is a, a function as part of uh, utilities and it's also part of SOLIDWORKS standard since 2016. What this will do is quickly show me where I'm, I need to add some missing features or repair some that have some errors. So let's dive in here and take a look at what compare is going to do for us. So go to your evaluate ribbon. It's right there in the middle. And that'll start up uh, the dialog box over on the task pane. We say compare the original with this uh, feature works model that we've got running here. And we just want to compare the geometry. So one of the benefits here is that I can say, uh, I can move these models simultaneously. So the original model's on top, my model's on the bottom. What's shown in red is, um, you know, material that I need to add to my model. So I'm gonna jump in here. Looks like I'm missing some fillets. Remember those got deleted when I deleted that uh, volume feature. So that's not a surprise to me. So looking at both models at the same time, uh, just visually, you can see that it looks pretty close now. Now, I went through this a couple of times on what size fillets to use. You could use some measurement tools or you could just guess and kind of hone in on that. But um, that seemed to clear up the, the fillets, but I still have uh, this big wall that actually goes all the way around that feature that we did an extrusion for. So I'm guessing that that's probably some draft. So that's my next thing I'm going to do is actually apply some draft to that, uh, uh, that extrude that I did, make sure it's going the right way, and run my comparison uh, one more time and see if, in fact, that, that gets me where I want to be, which is exactly where the imported model left me. So um, what we're going to find here is that we're looking really good. So if I look at um, material to add, that's going to show up on the bottom, which is my feature works model. And you're going to see some modeled faces here. At some point, you're going to have to decide, is this close enough to, um, uh, to what I need? You can turn off the common volume here and get kind of this uh, wireframe mode that, that highlights those areas more fully. If we turned on material to re remove as well as material to add. You can see that some of these holes that are maybe just slightly off in the computer models um, we could double check the locations of those holes or even recreate them if those are uh, mission critical. But this model um, works really well in terms of being able to recreate the feature tree and have confidence that it looks uh, and is, has the same geometry as what the imported model uh, uh, brought us. So just highlighting the fact that we have patterns and we actually have some hole wizard holes here. So when we tell it to recognize a hole, it'll try to recognize it as a hole wizard hole, which gives us additional functionality, as you know, uh, that we can uh, control the size of those more easily. So we gave FeatureWorks some help, we gave it some more help, and then we gave it some verification help. So we wanna know and uh, that what we end up with has all the same features and uh, volume and geometry that uh, our original imported model has. And we used compare geometry to do that. I wanna kind of close out here with a question though. Is a full feature tree really necessary? How important is it for you to have that? I mean, it feels like we want that because that's what we do every day when we use SOLIDWORKS, we end up with a full feature tree and we, can, we like being able to make those changes. But how important is that when we import these models? We do have some other tools available if it's not 
necessary to have a full feature tree, and, and I would uh, put it to you that probably most of the time it isn't. So we want to take a real quick look at uh, just recognizing individual features and using move face, delete face, and replace face. So let's just dive in uh, to our other example here and show you some of that. And I'm going to right click on the face of that hole and just tell it to edit the feature. You can see that there is no feature other than imported until we click on edit feature. Uh, feature works fires up in the background and creates a feature just for that hole. And it is a whole wizard hole and we can go in and make changes to that. So that's pretty nice. If I right mouse click on another one of these faces and choose move face. So move face, if you've not used it before, is really handy for this type of stuff. Some people call it direct editing. So if I just need to move that whole, you know, uh, some distance in the X, Y, or Z or some other direction, um, it'll do that and also give me a little dimension. And now I can play around with that uh, and move it even uh, more. So we can use that again. And this time, maybe I need to change the size of this hole. It needs to be two millimeters larger or smaller. We can do that easily with move face. And again, use the dimension that's left behind to make further changes to that if we need to. So now we've, we're building parametrics into this imported solid. Last here is delete face. Delete face has several options, one of which is called delete and patch. So I want to get rid of these filleted faces and patch um, the connecting faces back to kind of where they originally uh, uh, were uh, coinciding. Lastly, I'm going to create a, a new surface here in order to show you replace face. So um, this might be some wholesale changes that you're hoping to make, but um, you know how are you going to model that? Replace face can get you out of a lot of jams like this. So for instance, I want to take some of the solid geometry that I have and use the surface that I just created as the definition for where these faces should be on the solid. Replace face is going to do that very easily. You can see the updated geometry showing up here. So this is not something that required me to have a full feature tree in order to accomplish that. I could just simply work with the imported model and add some parametric intelligence to this by using um, just recognizing a, a feature on its own, a move face or replace face. So it really starts with do I really need a full feature tree, right? You can make a handful of changes a lot faster than trying to use feature works or even re redrawing um, the model that you have. So uh, just remember these other tools are available. You can recognize individual features like we did with uh, the hole there at the top. You can use move face if you need to translate uh, or rotate or even offset a face. Delete face uh, allowed us to delete that filleted face, and then we can either reapply a fillet that we have control over or maybe do something else in that area that uh, maybe that fillet was getting in the way. And then finally, we showed you replace face. So we had a surface that we used to modify this geometry a bit uh, and didn't need to have a full feature tree in order to accomplish that. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into feature works if you've not seen it before. If you've tried to use it before, um, maybe you found a, a, a thing or two, a little tip or trick to help you work uh, through your next model. I also uh, wanted to just point out that, you know, you can use this also on sheet metal parts. I think it works fairly decent on a sheet metal model. A couple things to watch for there is to make sure that it's the same thickness. So if you get a sheet metal model from another CAD package, and it's failing in, in, in some area or it's failing altogether, it may be because something is not quite parallel. The faces aren't quite offset um, uh, parallel and it thinks that there's two different thicknesses in the sheet metal part. Uh, the other thing to watch for with sheet metal parts is are the corners. So sometimes those corners get uh, kind of welded together for lack of a better term when there's supposed to be a, you know, a gap so that the flange can unfold there. So those would be a couple of places if you're working on sheet metal parts and you want to try feature works, uh, give that a try. All right, well, we appreciate everyone's time for sure. Uh, time is valuable. So um, if you come up with some questions, for sure give us a, a call. My name is Chris Snyder. I'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Our number is there on the screen. 
and um, be sure to check out uh, some of the other uh, webcasts that we've got going here in the month of October. You can uh, catch a list of those on CATI.com. Thank you, everyone, for attending.